Yes. So today, um, our topic of discussion for today's podcast is titled Your World is a Mirror That Reflects What Lies Within You. Um, again, like I always say, uh, this is one of my favorite subjects. I feel like I say that it's every time I have a podcast, but I really try to speak to things that really light me up, that excite me, um, things that I can learn about. And I know this is something that, you know, some might see this as radical or controversial. Um, others will really grasp it. And I believe that the more that you grasp this concept that everyone is you, um, people, places, and circumstances are you reflected outwards, you'll notice that life moves with more ease and flow and there has guidance to it, right? Neville Goddard said, quote unquote, everyone is you pushed out. And this simply means that every person you interact with um, is an aspect of yourself, right? More specifically, everyone you know is acting at a role that you've assigned them based on your assumptions, based on your beliefs, based on your um, level of consciousness. This extends beyond people. And this also translates into places, circumstances, and the things that you encounter. And we know this, like I said, we can have more ease and flow because we're not seeing the world as resistant to who we are. We just see it as a reflection of who we are. So if something shows up that we don't like, what is the lesson in there? And how can I change it? How can I adjust it? Am I guided to move in the same direction or should I course correct? You're constantly being guided. Your outside world is a reflection of what's happening within. Far too often we think that, okay, if things don't show up the way I like, I need to go out outside of myself and exert energy in trying to change these things. That's when life feels turbulent. That's when life gives us resistance. But we still do it anyways because this is the dominant messaging. And, you know, this is the equation to how we should change things. There's a simpler way, right? And it's just about finding ease and flow and look at your external circumstances as guidance. And when we do that, we'll experience more flow in our life. Uh, Neville Goddard, I'm going to discuss Neville Goddard today. I'm also going to discuss Shakti Gwine. Um, and I'll get right into the first few quotes here that I really like. And these are from Neville Goddard, right? And he said, to attempt to change the world before we change our inner talking is to struggle against the very nature of things, right? We make this attempt to go out and like, let me change my external circumstances. When something shows up that is incongruent with what we want, the idea is not to go outside and try to change it. But what we do is we put in time and we invest energy in trying to convince people, in trying to change circumstances, in trying to force things to change, force people to adapt our beliefs. And what this is saying is the, the, the directional approach that we're taking is actually backwards. It's not about changing the mirror. It's about changing yourself, right? To attempt to change the world before we change our inner talking, what we say about ourselves how what we what we say to in, encourage ourselves, what we say to uplift ourselves, is to struggle against the very nature of things. Neville says, if I be lifted up in consciousness to the naturalness of my desire, I should automatically draw the manifestation onto me. Right? Meaning you draw towards you what you desire to be. When I raise my consciousness to the state that's in vibrational frequency to what I desire. I shall automatically draw that manifestation onto me, right? When I'm in a place of frustration and fear and doubt, but I want and I desire something that carries a different vibrational frequency, something that's um, happiness and abundance and joy, but my energy is reflecting doubt and fear. We know that that's a lower vibrational frequency. It's a different frequency, it's a different level of consciousness, right? If I want to experience that change that I desire, I have to lift myself up, right? If I be lifted up in consciousness to the naturalness of my desire, I should automatically draw that manifestation on to me. You know, Neville goes on to say, the only way to change the expression of life is to change your consciousness. For consciousness is the reality that externally solidifies itself in the things around you, right? Man's world in its every detail is his consciousness outpictured right? Everything again is your consciousness. It's your consciousness objectified outwards, right? So as you raise your level of consciousness, the, what you see around you will reflect your level of consciousness. As you can no more change your environment or world by destroying things, than you can your reflection by destroying the mirror. Your environment and all within it reflects that which you are in consciousness. As long as you continue to be that in consciousness, 
so long will you continue to outpicture it in your world? You know, and again, this is reinforcing the, the whole discussion of today. What are you conscious of being and what does your world look like? And are they incongruent or are they in alignment? And if your outside world is not in alignment, what we tend to do by default is we want to go out and make that change, right? Because we've been advised to go out and make those changes, take action, right? If something, if you don't like something, go out and do it. And there's a lot of respect giving to those that go out and take some form of action because those that wait patiently work on self, oftentimes that can be looked at as not being serious or a go-getter, so to speak, right? There, there is a correlation. I'm not saying it's accurate, but there is a correlation or there's a belief. Let me change that. There is a belief that hard work and happiness in your outer world are highly correlated. There is that belief. They feel like there's a cause and effect. If you want positive results, you need to go out there and get in and do the hard work. I believe that what Neville's teaching us is there is another way, right? If your outside world is incongruent with what you want, it's not about going out and doing the hard work, but it's actually about looking in and seeing how can I reframe some of these beliefs? How can I raise my level of consciousness? How can I change my energetic and my vibrational frequency to align with what I desire? Rather than trying to change the mirror, if I don't like the reflection of the mirror, I don't destroy the mirror. I leave the mirror as it is because the mirror is just doing its job. The mirror is an innocent bystander. It's just saying, hey, I'm just showing you what you look like since you can't see it. <laughs> and it's up to us to take that useful information and use it as guidance. You know, sometimes I think you need to ask yourself, when you encounter people in your external world, uh, when coincidences happen, and when you end up with certain people, or when you end up with certain jobs, you know, the question is, what do you make of this? You know, is this all accidental? Or is this coincidence? Or are there more to our encounters, right? And that's the, what this discussion is about today. Today's discussion is showing us how everyone is you projected outwards. Every person, every place, and every circumstances is reflecting back to you where you are, what you need to move forward, what you need to heal, but ultimately what you need to do to set you free. And when you fail to look at life this way, you feel that life is just happening to you and you react to it, right? You may feel that things are constantly happening to you, but you never see that life is happening for you, right? And I also think this is understandable because like I've mentioned in the past, you know, this is not anything we've been taught. We've never been taught this at any point. Um, it's never been part of our curriculum, so to speak. You know, personally speaking, I can say prior to doing this work, I assume that the situations that I encountered in my life were random. What I'm saying is I never really understood the depth of these decisions I made, you know, why I made specific decisions around relationships, why I made specific career decisions, why I had certain stressing and coping habits, why I typically expressed certain emotions and suppressed others, why I was experiencing resistance in some areas in the world, you know, why I would still push through it right? Why I couldn't see the guidance, for instance, right? And there is a why and there is guidance. And here's the truth, right? There is a difference between going through life, seeing and looking. There is a difference. And when you don't see it, um, you move through life almost like this automaton, right? You're being bounced around in life or you're chasing pursuits because you're not aware. But when you can actually see life for what it is, you understand that Everything is a mirror, right? Our world is a reflection of what's happening within our subconscious. And the people that we encounter are here to reflect this back to us. You know, the situations that we encounter in our outer world represent our consciousness externalized, right? People mirror our, our levels of consciousness. So what we need to do is a pay attention to what people bring out of you, but also we really need to choose the states within that we want to experience without. Right. Neville Goddard said people represent an accurate image of your own consciousness. Right. So the state that we find them in is the state that we embody. So what we need to do as we move through this and what I want us to think about as we reflect on this today and discuss this today, you know, pay attention to what you say to yourself. Pay attention to your inner dialogue. You know, what is your general mood? What is your vibe? What is your energy? What is your emotional state? 
your mood materializes into people, environments, and circumstances. They all reveal your mood within. So if your mood materializes into people and people are going to match and mirror what's inside of you, we need to pay attention to our mood. Your mood is being revealed in the people that are around you. So when you encounter people that frustrate you, that anger you, that bring out the worst in you, right? Ask yourself, what part of you are they seeing, right? Because it's easy for us to point the finger and put the blame on external things, right? And Neville says, for life makes no mistakes and always gives man that which man gives himself first. Life does not care if you call yourself rich or poor, strong or weak. It will externally reward you with that which you claim as true of yourself. Right? If people make you feel angry, you may harbor feelings of anger. If people make you feel unworthy, you may have feelings of unworthiness. If people disrespect you, you may lack self-respect. If people cheat on you, you may lack self-belief. If people take advantage of you, you may lack boundaries. If people abuse you, you may lack self-worth. If people reject you, you may lack self-confidence. And if people doubt you, it's because you doubt yourself, right? Right. Your world is a reflection of you. So if your outside world is incongruent with what you want to experience, you can go in at any time and change it, right? It's not about changing the outside world, but rather it's about changing ourselves so our experiences change. You know, Neville stated, it is just as easy to possess the consciousness of these qualities as it is for you to possess their opposites. For you have not your present consciousness because of your world. On the contrary, your world is what it is because of your present consciousness, right? Our world is a mirror and part of our creation and it reflects our consciousness and the people, places, and circumstances are you projected outwards, meaning the external world will reveal aspects of what will allow you to grow. This is the benefit. This is the plus. Your world is giving you what you need to course correct and grow. Therefore, if something wasn't meant for you, you wouldn't experience it. Hence why we all have different experiences in, in our lives, right? Your experiences are here to gift you and bring you closer to the self-awareness and to self-growth. As you navigate your experiences, there's no reason for us to be hard on ourselves, but rather we should be compassionate with our choices, right? If your outside world is incongruent with your desires, at any point you can go in, spend time with self and do what you need to change it, right? And if you have a problem and your experience is challenges and you have resistance in your life, this is the universe is trying to get you to pay attention to something that needs to be changed, right? This is part of the journey. This is part of the journey of the self-discovery. The challenge that most of us have is interpreting the reflection of our mirror, right? Because we doubt what we see, you know, something appears and we're like, hmm, why does this keep appearing for me? Or why do I keep allowing this back into my life? Or what am I seeing and why am I seeing it? You know, regardless of our level of consciousness, we encounter this challenge because, you know, what we tend to do is we tend to intellectualize things and rationalize things. I mean, I know for the most part, this is something that I do, right? I'll look at information and I'll try to process it rationally or logically. Um, and I think that that is the first mistake that we make, right? Because again, this is something that we've been taught to do, right? We, we, we're a society that worships and looks up to intellectual-based decisions and we suppress and we look down to instinct and emotional-based decision-making. You know, the more you align with yourself and the more you start to do inner work, the more you tap into your meditation, even human design. Human design teaches us to get out of our head and into our body, to align with higher consciousness and begin to tap into our intuition, to our energy, into our soul. And when you invite intuition to guide you, you're going to see, receive the external guidance that you need. You know, we receive guidance in multiple ways. Um, your world as you reflected outwards is saying that whatever you claim yourself to be will be manifested outwards, right? So it's a matter of claiming it and believing it. It's paying attention to your inner dialogue. It's paying attention to your level of consciousness, your feelings, your emotions, because those will be reflected in the people, places, and circumstances that surround you. But you are the answer. That's why Neville says here, if you are hungry, your savior is food. If you are poor, your savior is riches. If you are imprisoned, 
your Savior's freedom. If you are diseased, it will not be the man called Jesus who will save you, but health will become your Savior. Therefore, claim, I am he, right? In other words, claim yourself to be the thing desired, right? Claim it in your consciousness, not in your words, right? Your consciousness will reward you with your claim. As the saying goes, asking you shall receive, right? When you ask the universe for guidance, it will come in various ways. And then you can use your intuition to decipher the message that you're receiving, right? The answer may come to you intuitively through a dream. It could be a visceral response, a gut response. It could be a knowingness. It could come from hunches and nudges, synchronicities, um, or people, right? That are energetically meant to guide you where you need to be to reveal what you need to see. The idea is the more you're in alignment with the universe, the more the universe works through you, right? Um, where you once experienced resistance in your life, you're going to begin to experience more ease and more flow. And as you progress down this journey, you're going to notice that where you once experienced resistance, you're going to experience ease and flow, right? The world is going to start to reflect your inner change. And at the beginning, this is going to feel uncomfortable because you know, it's aligning to something that's a departure from what you're familiar with, right? But if you continue to keep following your intuition and trust it, it will start to bring you home. You know, when I started to shift, I found that I was having challenges because the old me wanted to do things the way I've always done them. But I noticed more resistance when I reverted back to old habits, right? I noticed more fatigue. You know, when I worked on things that didn't light me up and when I followed my guidance, which I first felt weird and awkward, I noticed that things would flow more, you know, and what historically would be difficult for me came with ease and flow. You know, what usually required me to chase these things, certain things started to land on my, land my doorstep, right? And it just things became easier. Right. And I'll be the first to tell you that this is a process, right? It's a change. You're changing habits and patterns that you've had for decades. And now you're trying to adopt and trust something that you've been told not to trust and not to adopt. Right. And this is something that I'm still working through. Like sometimes I want to make decisions that stem from the old part of me that feed my personality. Um, you know, things that are based on financially driven decisions. Um, and there's other parts of me that want me to trust more, want me to lead with my heart, want me to love more, want me to align with my knowingness. Um, and I know that when I make decisions through that element of myself, the support will follow and I'll make the right decisions. But when you're stuck between the two and it's a tug of war between the two, this can create discomfort. You know, Shakti says, we need to allow this uncomfortable emotion to pass through us because you're dealing with several years of negative emotions that have been accumulated over time. You know, when you have unwavering belief that you are on the right path and you trust this new direction, doors will open up. Now for me, um, this was shifting from the IT and corporate to human design, NLP, hypnosis, coaching, writing, podcasting, doing YouTubes, um, aligning with an act of service and providing service in the way that felt authentic for me right? This was a huge departure, right? It's a departure from what I've done for decades. It was a departure from what my peers are doing. It's a departure from what I knew. It's a departure from what I was getting support to do. Um, but I share this because I want anyone who is listening to know, and anyone who's listening who might be experiencing something where they're trying to transition into what they want to do and out of what they've always done. I want them to know that, you know, when you step into life, the life that you're meant to step into and you do with confidence, you're going to be a lot more fulfilled. Yes, will it be challenging at times? Absolutely. Will things always play out and unravel the way you want? No. But will you be more fulfilled at the end? Yes. And you'll begin to experience true happiness and freedom. And then the people around you will support you, right? They'll notice the amount of belief that you have in yourself. And that belief in yourself will be reflected in their belief in you. You know, Shakti said, as you have unwavering faith and become more empowered in what you do, you will notice that the people around you will see you as someone who has made the right choice. And they will see your empowerment as inspirational.
So if you're making a career change, if you're doubting where you are, if you're looking to do something different, if you're unhappy with your current employer, if you feel like you could be doing more, if you feel like you're being inauthentic and out of alignment, um, if you feel like, hey, I'm doing this because of pressure and the pressure sits outside you, you know, you need to start paying attention to the signs that A, you're out of alignment and that B, it requires change because this is your world. This is your world reflecting back to you what you need. This is your world communicating to you through your language of intuition that something needs change, right? This is how our world communicates to us. It uses a mirror and reflects your inner world and your inner dialogue, right? And when we don't know this, this is when the world seems turbulent, right? And then we have the, we're reactive towards things that happen. But when we're aware, we create our experiences with more ease and more flow. Never God it says, what a comfort it is to know that all I experience is a result of my own standard of beliefs, that I am the center of my own web of circumstances. I really appreciate that. I am at the center of my own web of circumstances. And that as I change, so must my outer world. The world presents different appearances as our states of consciousness differs. What we see when we are identified with a state cannot be seen when I no longer identify with it. You know, I know that when I remove toxicity out of my life, I received more health. When I removed scarcity, I received more abundance. And when I showed myself more love, I had more love in my life. And it's through my experiences that I fully understood that, hey, I was always being guided, but I just couldn't see it. You know, we're all being guided, but, you know, and perhaps we are where we are because we need to see what is needed to see. But if you allow yourself to see what you need to see, you will no longer be where you've always been. Again, I like to say this is a process. I like to say from personal experience that things get messy before they get easier. Uh, things get more challenging before they smooth out. Things get rougher before they flow. This is what shifting looks like. This is what change looks like. This is what growth looks like. It's a paradigm shift. It's a beautiful thing, but you need to let in the light so things can, can grow, right? We have to remember the darkest hours before dawn. Change often occurs before you expect it. The key is for us to stay centered, continue to look within and see the guidance and know that we're not alone because everything is guiding you, right? There are mirrors everywhere. Everywhere you look, you know, you're going to see mirrors and people and places and circumstances. Um, your partner is mirroring back to you what you need to see. Your family members mirror back to you what you need to see. Your room, your home environment, your house, your children reflect back to you what you need to see so you can grow, right? So we're constantly have these external circumstances that reflect back to you what you need to see. The key is to know that if you don't like what you see in the mirror, you can go within, you can change yourself. Stop trying to change the world since it's only a mirror, right? Man's attempt to change the world by force is as fruitless as breaking the mirror and hope to change his face. Leave the mirror and change your face. Leave the world alone and change your concepts of yourself. Then this is simple, well said, but also challenging. You know, the reason why this is so hard for people to digest is, you know, everyone has proof and evidence of where they went out into the world, to the physical world, and they exerted some energy and they changed things and it worked. But we have to remember that we also have changes in our life that align with us changing our consciousness. So yes, are there multiple ways to exert and manifest change? Absolutely, there are multiple ways. But if you wanna do this in a way that's everlasting and consistent, and consists of ease and flow, you want to adapt a strategy that requires you to go within and change. As you change, you grow. As you grow, you evolve. And as you evolve and change, you will notice that people, places, and circumstances around you will match your change. And this reminds me of common sayings that we hear all the time, right? As above, so below. As below, so above. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Or as you believe, so shall it be done unto you. In other words, you change from within, right? And if you want change, you change internally. And as a result, 
you attract those that align with your change. This is how change happens. It's not about going outside of yourself, but it's going within. And those that seek change and change within will see change in their external world. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please feel free to comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you.